Okay, so what if we have three variables? How do we find a Jacobian? So if we have got x, y, and z, and we want to convert that into like a, say, u, v, w, um, well, x, y, and z are each going to be represented as a function of u, v, and w. And then the Jacobian with, of x, y, z with respect to u, v, w, we just get an extra variable on the top and the bottom there. And then my determinant just gets larger, so now we now have a three by three. So the top row is all of the partials of x, so partial of x with respect to u, partial of x with respect to v, partial of x with respect to w, the next row is all the y's, and then all the z partials. And you compute this determinant the same way that we did the cross product um, in the past. The only difference is, right, the top row isn't just like an IJK, it's actually an expression and it just gets multiplied by those little determinants the same way that the IJ and K were. So we'll do an example here real quick, but that's what we do there. And then you still end up with a factor of the absolute value of that Jacobian in the integral, inside the integrand when you change your variables. So let's try it for cylindrical coordinates. So with cylindrical, we've got X is R um, cosine theta, Y is R sine theta, and Z is Z. So those are our functions, and then we need to do all of our different partials. So when we do the Jacobian, we'll do the x's on the top, since that's our first variable. So we'll first do it with respect to, in this case, we did the order r, theta, z. So we'll do the partials in that order. So the partial with respect to r, of r cosine theta is cosine theta. The partial of r cosine theta with respect to theta is negative r sine theta. And then the partial of r cosine theta with respect to z is zero because there is no z factor in there. It's just a constant. And then remember, we're doing a derivative, so the derivative of a constant is zero. And then with the y function, r sine theta with respect to r, we'll just keep sine theta. With respect to theta, we'll end up with r cosine theta. And then with respect to z, again, there is no z, so the derivative will be zero. And then taking a look at z, the function for z is z. So the derivative with respect to r is zero, and with respect to theta is zero, and with respect to z is one. So then when we take a look at this, if you kind of remember what we did, we'll take each piece one at a time. So we'll take like the cosine theta, and then we're going to multiply it by the little determinant where we cross off cosine theta's row and column. So then we'll have the little determinant of our cosine theta. 0, 0, 1. We then move to the next column over. We take this top row and we're going to do the negative of that. So it will be plus because it's minus the negative r, so it'll be plus r sine theta. And then when we do the little determinant crossing off that middle column and top row, we'll have sine theta is zero, and then zero, one. And then in the last one, um, we're gonna have the zero, so we'll have plus zero times a little determinant, or that determinant would be these guys in there, but really, it doesn't really matter what's in that determinant because we're gonna multiply it by zero anyway. So it's just gonna go to zero. Um, so then working through these, we've got cosine theta times the quantity, multiply the main diagonal, so we've got r cosine theta, and then we have minus zero. And then we have plus r sine theta times, we'll have sine theta uh, times 1, and then minus 0. And then that whole last thing, the determinant actually also would have been zero because we would have had sine theta times zero minus our cosine theta times zero, but regardless, it's all just plus zero. So then we can see where this is going. We've got our cosine squared theta 
plus r sine squared theta, which is just r. So then again, when as long as r is positive, then the absolute value of r is going to just be r. And so that will be our Jacobian that we add into our cylindrical change of coordinates. Um, if you do look things up online, um, there are other ways so of simplifying this 3x3 three three determinant. You don't have to use the top row. You can actually pick any row or column to use in these main pieces out front. Um, and what happens is you do the same process where if you pick a different spot, you always kind of take that entry and then cross off that entry's row and column to get the other determinant. And then the, the thing you have to keep track of is if you remember when we go across the top row, right, we do a positive, negative, positive, right? We add the first one, subtract the second one, and add the last one. That always happens in the same pattern. So it's a plus, minus, plus, and then those keep alternating. So then if you did the second row, you would subtract the first one, add the second one, subtract the third one. The third row you would add, subtract, add again. So for instance, we could have, if we wanted with this last one, have used like the last column, for instance. So we would have zero times this determinant because we would cross off its row and column minus zero times the determinant with cosine theta, negative r sine theta, zero, zero. And then we would have plus one times the determinant, we'd cross off its row and column. So we'd be left with cosine theta, negative r sine theta, sine theta, r cosine theta. It always works though, they're all the same. It turns out that all of them work. So you can always use the top row, but if you see, like we could see that because there's a bunch of zeros in the last column, it could be useful or the last row, we could have also used that last row as well. Um, and it works the same way, you get the same results. In general, that doesn't work with the cross product because remember the i, j, and k were in a specific spot and they weren't the same as the other things that were in the cross product, but for a general determinant, that's how you compute it. It's always a, a process that works. So this is what you do with three variables. You're probably wondering how about spherical coordinates? Um, so you guys are, will get a chance to prove the Jacobian for spherical coordinates is that Let's see if I can remember. It's like rho squared sine phi, if I'm correct. You can look it up and make sure that I'm correct. But you're going to do that one on your homework. So I don't want to steal the fun from you. Um, but that is Jacobians. And that also then will... Um, we might do one more example, but that then wraps up chapter 14 for us.